Greetings, my excellent friends, and welcome to Pro Photo Tips. My name is Josh Cripps, and you can join me online at the Nature Photography Academy. A little history about myself. I don't have any formal training in photography. In fact, I went to school for aerospace engineering, and I didn't even pick up a serious camera until three years after I had my bachelor's degree. Everything I know about photography, I've learned through years of passionate practice, asking tons of questions, and making lots and lots of mistakes. And along the way, I've learned some incredibly valuable lessons that have made my life better, both as a photographer and as a person. So in this series of videos, I'm excited to share with you seven of my favorite life lessons learned through photography. Hope you enjoy. For those of you who don't know who Peter Lick is, he's probably the most commercially successful landscape photographer of all time. He's the guy who's made headlines in the last couple of years for selling multiple prints for millions of dollars each. Now, Peter Lick has certain skills as a photographer, but in my opinion, where he shines the brightest is in his presentation. He has galleries in major destination cities like Aspen, Honolulu, Vegas, and Miami, and each is immaculately presented. The photos are huge and wonderfully lit with tons of eye-popping color and ridiculous wow factor. Now, whether you like his photography or not is really beside the point. The takeaway here that Peter Lick understands perfectly is that how you present yourself to the world is how the world is going to see you. Now, I'm not saying you have to show yourself as a caricature of awesomeness in order to be successful in life. I am saying there are some fantastic lessons to be learned here. One of the most important of which is how do you value yourself? Do you approach your work with an attitude of self-worth or self-doubt? Let me give you an example. When I first started selling my work at art and wine festivals, I had the cheapest, most rinky-dink setup you can imagine. A basic back wall for displaying frame prints and a couple of wooden crates for matted prints. What this setup said was, Ooh, I'm just starting out, please take pity on me. It smacked of self-doubt, but over the years I learned those lessons of presentation and by the time I finished doing art festivals a few years ago, my setup was completely different. My booth said, I respect myself, I respect my work, and so should you. Another great example for all you artists trying to sell your work is pricing. The tendency is to say, I'm not trying to get rich from this, or I'm just starting out, or I have no idea what I'm doing, and to set your prices super duper low. And true, you can make a print this big for five bucks and sell it for six, and yeah, you've made a profit, but what does that say about how you value yourself? value your work, and the value that other people should place on what you're doing. A second fantastic lesson to take away from this is not just how do you present yourself, but what do you present in the first place? I've heard it said that the difference between a professional and amateur photographer is that the professional takes way more bad photos, simply because they're out shooting all the time, trying new things, taking risks, and pushing their boundaries. But the question is, what photos does the professional ultimately show? Consider two guys of equal talent. The first shares every photo he takes, good and bad. You know what happens? He builds a reputation as a mediocre photographer who occasionally produces good work. The second guy is brutal in his self-editing and only shares his absolute best work. Even though he's not a better shooter than the first guy, he builds a reputation as an excellent photographer. Here are two sets of photos that I took. Think about what each says about me as a photographer. This one says I shoot a random mishmash of stuff, not that cohesive or impressive. But this second set says clearly, here's a guy who takes seascape photography very seriously. So what's the moral of the story here? I'm not saying you have to be disingenuous or pound your chest and shout, I'm the greatest thing since last bread, or pretend that you never make mistakes or never take a bad photo. What I am saying is if you value yourself, you value your work, and you show people that in what you present and how you present it, then people will value you too. And that goes for art as well as life. As always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel so you can catch all the videos in this series. You can also jump on my newsletter to get all kinds of free photography and post-processing tips. Until next time, have fun and happy shooting.